Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am so glad you guys are here. If you're new, my name is Angela. I am a mom of eight kids. So we are a family of 10 and on this channel, there's usually, there's in this home, usually some large scale meals being made, doubling, tripling, quadrupling. So sometimes you'll see crazy amounts. It just depends on the evening. <laughs> I have not done one of these videos in a long time, and so I wanted to try and get it out. It ended up just being weeknight meals that I made. Tonight, I am doing a baked brown sugar glazed ham, and I'm just slicing up some russet potatoes right now so I can make some scalloped potatoes on the side to go with it. Now, having a large family and a family of 10 to cook for every day, that just sounds overwhelming, right? <laughs> it sounds a little intimidating, but thankfully I have a love of cooking and baking. That is like my jam, that is my thing. But do I still get tired and burned out? Absolutely. And if you're new, I didn't mention in the beginning, I homeschool my eight kids all eight of them. And I actually have from the very start, starting with my oldest, who will be 14 in May. And so that means making three meals a day, not just dinner. Now, some people get really overwhelmed. Just the fact of cooking dinner each night, that can get really old and easy to burn somebody out because you kind of always have to be creative with what are we going to eat tonight? And one of the tips that I want to share with you guys is some things that have helped me along the way because making three meals a day, I certainly get burned out from time to time. And let's, let's just be honest here. I'm not cooking all the time. There are times we're out running errands and we're too far from home and we know we need to get dinner out. And there's times where I am just in a funk and out of ideas to make my kids for lunch. And we do what I call a snacky lunch and we do meats and, you know, some type of protein, a fruit, a vegetable, some nuts, you know, something like that. So if you are in a season of life where you're new to this and you're trying to figure out different tips and tricks for meal planning and staying consistent, because consistency is honestly the key here. And, and one of the keys to consistency is definitely meal planning. That is something I have done for years and that has been my saving grace. I, I have had so many evenings though throughout these years where it's four o'clock, it's dinner prep time, and I'm like, oh, what's for dinner? I didn't buy anything. Oops. And that's when you usually resort to not so great choices like boxed mac and cheese. I'm not knocking anybody. Hello, I have eight kids. This happens sometimes, um, especially on the sick days, but here comes the boxed foods and the canned foods and the not so healthy, great for you foods, or you're wasting money on takeout. And I say wasting because for the, for the cost of food right now to go out to eat, it's insane. And not even the fact that we have eight kids to feed and five of those eight kids eat off the adult menu. It is hundreds when we go out to eat hundreds. Okay. And if we go to Chick-fil-A, and we're on the go, that's over $100 for our family of 10. It's crazy. And I say waste the money also because I can make it better at home. Our family enjoys the meals that I cook and it always tastes better at home and homemade. So it, having a meal plan to fall back on for those crazy days, it, it avoids those crazy days of opening your pantry and asking yourself, well, what am I feeding my kids? What am I feeding my, my husband, my family? And so I, used to monthly meal plan and that used to work until we added to our family and it was basically when I had the twins number six and seven that that really started changing and I went to meal planning weekly now when you meal plan see we grocery shop for the month we do monthly grocery hauls that's what we do and we live over an hour away from 
the stores that we shop at, like Sam's Club. I don't even really go to Walmart, but Sam's Club. And then we have the Azure Standard truck that comes once a month here. We, ha we go to Safeway in between for little things here and there, but it's just, it's not cost effective for the tiny amount of food you get. Anyway, here's the finished product. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm like in the middle of the voiceover. Oh, I have been rambling a little bit. I'm trying to give some tips here and throw some meal planning tips into this meal video here. And let's see real quick so I can carry on. What am I making tonight? Tonight we are doing chicken teriyaki thighs. I've just got to say it's been absolutely gorgeous out today. Probably like 60 degrees and we have been working outside all day long today. Getting ready for a weekend with some big projects that we have going on. We have a lot of new plans and goals that we want to accomplish this year and we're really excited about what we have planned. We got some of our deliveries today for materials. so. Super exciting things happening, way quicker than we thought they would happen here. So anyway, we've been playing outside and it is late. <laughs> it is getting close to dinner time. So chicken teriyaki thighs, I think I have a video. I'm almost positive I've done this before. So in a video, so I'm gonna post a link in the description box if you want this recipe and I'm gonna take you guys along and that is what we are having for dinner this evening. So meal planning, I do it weekly because I have a good stock of stuff on hand. My freezers are packed with meat, probably honestly close to two years worth of meat, close to it. And I have a lot of staples that I stock up on pretty well. I have a short-term pantry and a long-term slash working pantry because I cycle things. I don't hoard things. I cycle them and that's what we do. But I have large amounts that I cycle through. So. Anyway, I can stick to monthly meal or monthly grocery shopping for us and still do my meal planning weekly. That works for me. So if you live right near a grocery store and you grocery shop weekly, then plan accordingly. You can meal plan the meals that you want for that week and you can go to the grocery store at the beginning or end of the week, whatever you choose to do and get those ingredients. Make sure you have it on hand. What I always do is shop my pantry first. I look at what I have a lot of in the pantry and what needs to get used up or as close to the best by date. And I will plan a lot of my meals according to that or the produce that I have on hand. So really throughout the weeks, the only thing I'm running out for is like salad. If we want salad to go with our meals or any type of produce or perishables that don't last very long. Just start by writing out the meals. Now you don't have to be you know, you don't have to stick to them. If a night doesn't work or you forget to thaw something, you can swap your meals around, but at least you know what ingredients you have on hand and what you can make with those ingredients and swap days if you have to. And that is one way to for sure not eat crappy dinners <laughs> and not have to spend money on the fly and get takeout and uh, just have a horrible evening. <laughs> you can have it together and know what you have on hand and be able to make your family a fresh meal for dinner without the evening getting chaotic with hangry people coming at you and little kids demanding food and you having no clue what is for dinner. Now, another way of making sure meal planning runs smoothly and also saving a lot of money in the long run is buying in bulk. Now you might say, I only have two kids or I only have four kids. 
we don't buy in bulk. We're, we're not a large family. You don't have to be a large family to buy in bulk. If you have to space, this is the thing. If it's something you use all the time and it is a regular staple in your house, start buying. And this could be a cost thing. Maybe you can't afford it financially. It took me a long time to build up my pantry that I have and the amount of food that I keep on hand. And I started a long time ago. I'm just going to say that. But buying in bulk does not mean you run out to the grocery store and run up your credit card. Buying in bulk is if you go through a lot of ketchup, if you have any kids, you probably go through a lot of ketchup or ranch. But if you go through a lot of ketchup, buy two. If you go to a regular grocery store, buy two or three if you're going for one buy an extra. If you shop at Sam's Club and you already think you're buying in bulk by getting the three pack of ketchup, maybe get two of those. Then you have six bottles on hand right off the bat. Start doing that. And that is how I built up my food pantry that I have. And my, I know a lot of people call it grocery store these days, but because you are, you're shopping from your pantry, but basically creating that amount of food, that's not hoarding. And I know so many people look at it and they're like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. But honestly, it's really smart because you're saving a lot of money buying more staples that you're going to use, that you rely on all the time, buying it up front in bulk. It just saves money and it makes sense. So yes, the expense is up front, but if you take the time and you actually count the cost and then you save up for what's a better deal in bulk, you'll be surprised how much that eases your grocery budget. So just throwing that out there, buying in bulk, you know, buy your main staples in bulk. And then also when you're in the middle of cooking, you don't go to your pantry and say, oh my goodness, where is this? How are we out? Because that's, that's never, that's never a good time. (laughs) I have done that so many times and I just, I, I don't, I have backups and I have backups for my backups. So you can call me crazy, but it saves me a lot of money in the long run. And I just do it in the seasons where financially we can put out some money and, and I buy extra then. And then that actually helps you. This is going into a pantry, pantry tips now, but I'm going to throw this out there anyway. It helps you in the seasons where you are financially strapped because we all, we all face them unless you're like, I mean, unless you got a lot of money, we all face those hardships from time to time and you are better prepared and prepped for an emergency. And my pantry has gotten us through numerous times, numerous times. Anyway, let's carry on. Now, if you hit a funk where you just run out of dinner ideas, you have no clue what to make. You don't want to make the same meals multiple times a week or multiple times a month. I'm going to suggest a fun way to actually give you ideas. That's a little creative is get the family involved. Ask them, you know, what I try to do. I try to, I'm not going to say I do this all the time, but I try because I actually, we never eat the same dinner in a month. I have like 80 different dinners I do and I always switch it up, but that's just because of my love for cooking and I love a challenge and I make foreign food and all kinds of crazy stuff. But I'm going to suggest if you run out of ideas and you just don't know, and you don't feel like falling down the rabbit hole, Google to find 500 different dinner ideas and of ingredients you never even buy or have heard of. <laughs> I may have been there one time, but <laughs> I, I suggest getting your family on board, ask your family, you know, if you need meals for a week and you just can't think straight, whatever, you're just too tired, run down ask your family, ask your kids, what do you feel like for dinner this week? Now, unless your kid blurs out chocolate bundt cake with <laughs> icing, <laughs> like, like my four-year-old will always say he wants a chocolate bundt cake with red, white, and blue icing and 
Fourth of July sprinkles. This is this is all the time. This kid, he's he's like super patriotic. He loves he loves the red, white, and blue thing right now. But anyway, you can get ideas from your family and then that means that you're going to cook something they like and you're not going to have the picky eater at the table who doesn't want to eat dinner or you've tried something new off online and your whole family hates it it's it's good to try things new from time to time I always stick to the tried and true recipes but I have a lot because I've been cooking for a lot of years so I have a huge amount of recipes in my little binder that I keep but get your family involved and hear what your husband wants and and just take orders kind of. And that's what I'll do. Like, all right, what do you want for dinner this week sometimes? And they'll, I want this, I want that, or, you know, what whatever meals they like. And that, that can help sometimes too. And then your family feels like they're involved too because they're not just eating what mom decided to make tonight. Kind of gets your family on board and you're cooking for your family after all. So it's nice for them to be able to have a say in what is for dinner too. So just food for thought. And salad. Now on to the next day. Tonight I am finally getting around to this talk about switching up days of meal planning. I wanted to do this at the beginning of the week, but I finally have time for it today. I remembered to thaw the ground beef. So tonight I am making meatloaf. It is an absolutely delicious meatloaf. I'm going to share the recipe with you in this video. Now I am doubling mine, so I will tell you in the video what you would want to do if you weren't doubling it you would want to use one and a half pounds of ground beef you would want to also chop up one small onion you'll want to also chop up one slice of bread i just sliced this up finely and then you will add to it one egg one teaspoon table salt four tablespoons of ketchup and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, followed by about a half a cup of milk. You can use half and half. I personally use 2% milk, but that is it. It is so good. My, my husband hate, oh my gosh, my husband can be picky sometimes. I'm just going to say that and put that out there. Um, he has gotten so good now. <laughs> like, there's he there's nothing I've made that he won't try. But he absolutely loves my cooking, and he hates meatloaf. Okay, he's always hated meatloaf. When I first started making this, oh my goodness, how long ago? I don't even know. Eight years ago, maybe when I started making this, he likes it a lot. I don't think it'd be too far-fetched to say he loves it. He enjoys this a lot. And in here on one of the sides, I'm also going to be doing some baked mac and cheese. I think I have a video. I'm going to put it in the description box below, but I'm pretty sure I've made my baked mac and cheese before. If I did, there'll be a description in the video or a link because it's delicious. Anyway, and then the sauce for the meatloaf, you want to do four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, half a cup of ketchup, and I do about three tablespoons of light brown sugar. It is so good. And I just put that on top of the meatloaf after I've put it into the loaf pan and bake it. You can make that sauce additionally to serve with it. I personally like to do that, but today I did not have the time to do that. It was a busy day. And then just bake it at 350 degrees for one hour. I actually do about one hour in 10 minutes and it is done at that point and cooked through, but it is so good. And my kids love it. And baked mac and cheese is also a super simple side to go with this and some steamed broccoli, or I think, I don't even know what I did tonight. I have no clue. I don't know what I did on this side till the video continues. But anyway, a salad, steamed broccoli, whatever you want for a veggie. And then you got your meat, your veggie, and your 
pasta or whatever you want to do. Absolutely delicious. I really hope you guys give this a try. Now, if you are new to meal planning or just now wanting to incorporate it into your life and you haven't done it before, my suggestion would be start off simple. That will save you. <laughs> start off simple, basic meals until you really get going and figure out a good rhythm or routine. I like to challenge myself and I can be my own worst enemy and I can make ridiculously elaborate dinners sometimes in the middle of a school week and yeah <laughs> just start simple it doesn't have to be extravagant I'm trying to do these videos a little bit more frequently and maybe have one or two a month thrown in the mix just to give you guys different ideas and then if you guys see a video that you guys want the recipe to I can always do a cook with me style recipe step by step more in depth and thorough I just wanted to throw this meatloaf recipe in here because I had a couple viewers before say oh I think I mentioned it in a video I don't know I must have said something because they had asked about it anyway just start simple with your meals. Don't overwhelm yourself and make your life more chaotic than it needs to be because feeding your family every single night, especially feeding a large family, it can be stressful sometimes if you don't keep it simple or have a really busy week ahead of you. So I definitely suggest keep it simple. Another tip that I want to share is when you write out your meal plan, try and keep it in a location that you go to or see daily. That is really helpful. <laughs> Me personally, I'm horrible at checking my planner. Why? Because I got the hourly planner this year, which I've never done before, and it's terrible, and I just can't keep up with it. I, I cannot do hourly because who can plan their day hourly? I can't. My life's too unpredictable. Anyway, all that to say, I don't check my planner. I know that. And what I have on the side of my sink is one of those little chalkboard type things. It works perfectly for the little space on the side of my kitchen sink. And I'm washing dishes how many times a day? A lot of times a day. Well, actually, that's my kid's chore, but I'm at the sink a lot of the times during the day. So that is my go-to place for it, and that's where I write it down. Now, you can just get a sheet of paper and write it on your fridge every week. There's free printables online that are actually cute and attractive, and you, in other words, it wouldn't be an eyesore on the front of your fridge, and you can just fill them out. You print them, fill them out, and put it in front of your fridge as your daily reminder. And if you are good with planners, then you can put it in your planner wherever you choose to keep it. Keep it somewhere where you're going to see it and be reminded. And that way when you see it, well, hopefully you get in the habit like, like I try to. <laughs> I still strive to do this, but thaw your meat the night before. I'm usually thawing it the day of in a bowl of cold water on the counter. That has been the story of my life for multiple times throughout multiple years. But that's a, an all else fails. Or if you pressure can, just pull the meat that's already cooked, ready to go off your shelf. I know somebody who does not can or pressure can or do home food preservation is sitting there saying that is disgusting, but seriously, it is, it is the best. It is so good. It tastes so good. Um, but I'm just going to leave that there. That is 
one reason why I pressure can, one of the many reasons I pressure can, besides the fact like who doesn't want shelf stable meat ready to go, you know, power outages, whatever, not going to go down there, (laughs) not going into that rabbit hole. But the point I'm getting at is let that be a reminder when you see that list. Oh, it's, you know, morning. Let me thaw that meat and get it ready to go so I can actually stick to our dinner plan. And here is our dinner all done. It was actually really good. I did do canned green beans. I did. You know why? Because we used up all the salad (laughs) the night before. I couldn't remember. I try. I'm not a fan of canned vegetables, but it was really good. It was delicious. It was super yummy. Oh, and oops, slip up. I totally forgot here that I was doing the what we eat in a week thing and totally forgot to film making my creamy potato soup. And we just did grilled cheese on the side. All right, you guys, I'm doing a voiceover for this whole thing, but I just got home. I did a Sam's Club and Walmart haul again. I needed some stuff, not even filming it, but I got a helper with me. So you're going to see little Isaiah here. He wants to help mommy cook at dinner. He's he's always wanting to be in the kitchen with me. So you going to help me cook? All right. <laughs> Another tip I did say before, involve your family as far as choosing meals to make throughout the week. If you kind of just have a brain fart and can't think of anything because that happens, especially after 16 plus years of cooking every single night for me, but involve your kids. What? (laughs) I know a couple years ago, I'd be like, yeah, why on earth would I even do that to myself? But I've grown up since then, you guys. And involve your kids. It helps. It helps in so many ways. Not only do they feel like they're a part of cooking dinner with you and a part of the meal and they can be like daddy look how you helped cook dinner you know and be all proud but guys they're learning they're learning and your kids will eventually get to ages where I can't believe I'm old enough to say this oh my gosh I don't feel that old I just turned 36 in March but your kids will get old enough where they don't really want to be involved unless they absolutely have to be. And you tell them that they need to be involved like over and over and over again. <laughs> like you need to do this, <laughs> but I'm talking about like chores and stuff like that. But your kids are at an age, if you have young kids where they want to help, they want to be involved. And many years ago, you know, your first few kids are your guinea pigs and you learn and it's trial and error and you get things wrong as a parent, but you can redeem yourself and you can make things right down the road. My little kids back then, I just thought it was more of a headache to have them in the kitchen. It took longer you know, you finally measure out liquid ingredients and they knock it over and not only do all your ingredients spill on the floor, but now you have glass to pick up and it's this this whole chaotic thing. And then you have dogs and kids running around through the glass and, you know, it can, it could turn into a nightmare real quick. But I have really learned this over the years. It is huge. It is big. And a lot of my kids, when they're younger, they do remember those few times that I let them help. And I I hate saying that. It breaks my heart to say that. But there's so many times I just rushed through. I just wanted to get it done. I wanted to check it off. I didn't know how to live intentionally. And that's another tip here. Be intentional. Be intentional when you cook. Put thought into it. Put, you know, they always say what's the secret ingredient in really good cooking, and it's love. But put love into it. Like right here, my son. Now I didn't see this. I, I was filming it, but yeah, he could have fallen and not hit his chin in the sink. But he wanted to be involved, and he wanted to wash the peppers. So I let him do that while I was chopping these onions. 
but do those little things. It's those little things that mean the world to your kids. And they're going to remember that. My daughter remembers like when she was four years old, sitting on the stove top, stirring Zupa to scone. And I actually have the picture still of her in her little cute apron with her little blue dress. I remember it like it was yesterday. So not only are you creating these memories for your kids, you're creating these memories for yourself. And we've done in the past couple of years, it took a long time. We lived a really rough life for the first good chunk of our marriage, check to check, really not going into it in this video, really miserable. But the point I'm trying to make here is we can go on these vacations now from time to time and we have a fifth wheel and we can up and go for a four day weekend sometimes. And we can do these extravagant things and go to Mount Rushmore and take our kids, friends with us and, and do these getaways and cram in four or five different things, you know, it, it, all these expensive trips we can do. And even out of all those, it is those little memories that cost nothing except my time that I hold on to, that I cling to, and that I can recall like it was yesterday. It, it seriously is. And I, I hate that it took me so many years to learn this, but I am just overall thankful that I was not too late and my kids weren't out of the house. And I, I thought all the what ifs, you can redeem yourself if you have been one of these parents to one of these moms or dads that have just done things yourself because it's easier. It's less mess. It's less headache. It's less chaotic. And you're teaching these, these skills to your kids too. And there's the next tip. You can get your kids involved with your meal planning and teach them things at the same time. Teach them to cook. Teach your kid that's struggling with math or just doesn't want to do it how important it is to cook. My daughter, I don't want to throw any of my kids ever under the bus on my YouTube channel. I, I've seen it on people's channels and it drives me nuts. I don't ever want to, but I had a daughter who was not great with fractions and she just gave up. She didn't want to do fractions. She's like, I don't want to do this. And I'm like, oh, hello, what am I going to do? Send her to the principal's office. Um, the principal's at work till her bedtime. So no, I can't really do that. And what I ended up doing is she loves cooking. She loves cooking and baking and anything in the kitchen. So guess what? It's okay to have a little bribery. There's, there's no shame in that. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And so I was like, okay, you want to cook with me? All right. Well, we have to triple this recipe for our size family. So one third cup of this, how much are you going to need? And you guys, she fell in love with doing math after that. She got it. She understood it. She saw the importance. And it's things like that sometime that, you know, it built up her confidence and, and she just, she did it. And that was her reward. Like, okay, you get to cook with me or bake with me. And, you know, you have to know how to do this. So it, it it's just really important getting your kids involved. Yes, it can be a headache. And if you have a lot of kids like me, I, I mean, I have to break it up. Oh my gosh. If I, if I sit there and throw out, who wants to cook with me? I will have eight kids here and seven of them are going to be leaving in tears when I tell them, no, I'm only doing one kid. Sorry. <laughs> I can only handle one kid helping me right now, but I can designate nights like, Hey, you're going to do this. Hey, you're going to do that. I had my kids one time cook dinner and dessert and my oldest daughter handled the chicken and getting the barbecue chicken and the barbecue sauce made up and put it in the slow cooker. And then my other daughter, I don't know what she did that night. I made coleslaw or she wanted to make coleslaw. So I told her, okay, here's the sauce recipe you go ahead and do that. So she got to do that. And then my daughter came in and she made homemade apple fritters. The only thing I did for her was actually pop them in the hot oil. So she didn't burn herself. But other than that, she, they, they did that and they each had a part to do a dinner and they were so proud and they just, they, their faces lit up when daddy came home because I had to like pry him away from work. I called them and I'm like, you better be here for dinner because your kids will be very disappointed in you. And he came home home and he enjoyed it and they were just so proud of that accomplishment so and I think if I didn't let them do that it would just be another night mom's cooking but anyway those little things totally make a difference
I totally forgot to say in the beginning. Did I? Did I even say it? I don't remember. <laughs> it's a little late. But tonight we are doing steak fajitas and I am making some homemade Spanish rice. I had a dentist appointment earlier today and was so frustrated. I had a filling done recently and then I went back a second time for an adjustment because my left side of my mouth still hurt and long story short, it still hurts. So I went in today, they put some desensitizing stuff on it because they did x-rays and couldn't see. I'm really starting to think it was the injection for the pain that he did the first time into the jaw joint that triggered a nerve because if they're not seeing anything and I'm still having pain and the desensitizing stuff didn't work. Yeah. Anyway, so I was down the hill. <laughs> it was like a 2.30 appointment. I didn't get out of there till 3.30 and then I picked up the groceries that I got last minute and yeah, came home. So that's all I had time for today. And so it's a little bit later, I have a dinner, but it's still light outside. So that's okay. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys stuck around this long, I greatly appreciate it. And if you guys have any videos that you'd like to see, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care and God bless.